Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome um, so as we reach the end of the course I thought I'll show you or talk to you about something very um, interesting and unusual uh, this is called small towns in cinema the crisis of representation now um, you would remember the representation of cities in cinema we have been talking about that and we particularly refer to um, cities uh, uh, with reference to Hindi films I hope you remember that um, here I am going to talk about something uh, diametrically opposite small town in films if you remember the city cinema usually talked about uh, the early city cinema with the dichotomy the binary between city and small town and the rural and the countryside right uh, now small town represent representation just like representation of city metro city big cities has also undergone a major change both at home and abroad so if you watch film uh, cinema of small town uh, in tamil in uh, telugu and also in hindi films you will find that uh, there is a subtle change that has happened so small towns are no longer the towns the way they were the towns uh, that were rep represented in the uh, cinema of uh, let's say the 70s and the 80s there has been a major shift in uh, representation of small town in our cinema as well as in uh, international cinema so my focus today is a representation of a small town in cinema and I am going to particularly talk about the major shifts, trends and crisis of representation. Uh, as we know that early American cinema, uh, yes, so we are basically going to talk about European and American cinema and how uh, small town was represented here. So as we know that early American uh, cinema, uh, they portrayed cities as moral, as centers of moral decadence and decay moral pestilence okay. films during the great depression and here I am talking about the great depression this was the financial crisis uh, which started in 1929 and went up till the mid 30s late 30s in America so it was a time when cinema portrayed small towns as safe heavens more or less an escapist fantasy uh, so therefore when we talk about small towns in cinema especially American cinema we will be referring to the great depression we will be talking about of course this is a seminal film it's a wonderful life by Frank Capra it's a key text of representation of small town in Hollywood cinema uh, there was also a play on which films were based our town by Thaw uh, Thornton Wilder now uh, I said films were based because there have been a number of films based on our town there has been a television series and also te uh, tv films also based on thornton wilder's our town which is again life is, is all about life in small american town uh, we'll also be talking about to kill a mockingbird i'm sure many of you are aware of this novel by harper lee which is about racism in a small town in america uh, and then when we talk about shift we will talk about splendor in the grass by William Inge it's based on a play by William Inge and directed by the great Alaya Kazan um, also the 70s the American new wave film uh, uh, a movement when it started so we had uh, the last picture show by P uh, Peter Bogdanovich and then more recently we had films such as Pleasantville and also Chocola by Lasse Hallstrom also What's Eating Gilbert Grape again by Lasse Hallstrom so um, when we were discussing European cinema we were talking about filmmakers from Sweden and we have already referred to Lasse Hallstrom today we will look at two of his major films in Hollywood 
during the depression years small towns were represented as, represented as safe haven or haven for uh, people it was more or less uh, represented to in order to uh, give some kind of respite uh, some kind of escapism so it offered escapism for the american public that every, all is well with the world these films basically uh, starred people such as uh, Shirley Temple the child star uh, of that time and another major child actor of that time uh, Mickey Rooney hmm? so those were the films uh, those were the actors that uh, pulled in huge crowds they were enormously successful films musicals also became extremely successful when we were talking about hollywood musicals i referred to this element as well that how important uh, Uh, musicals as a genre in hollywood had become when america was going through a major uh, financial crisis or economic crisis so perhaps these things are associated um, people look for easy entertainment and escapist fare when things are not too well around them another major actor or major child star of that period was Uh, the great elizabeth taylor who also starred in a number of films uh, and uh, most popularly lassie come home and national velvet which was her debut feature so all these films are set in small towns during the depression period and they offered a major escape for the film goers the us depression has been the subject of uh, much analytical critical writing as the country has sought to reevaluate an era that dumped financial as well as emotional catastrophe on its people the most important novel of that period is the grapes of wrath by john steinbeck there has been a f- major film based on uh, the novel starring uh, henry fonda and it was directed by john ford one of the greatest films ever made on and about the depression period and the novel was a 1939 novel the us depression is also depicted very well in uh, and that era is dip, uh, depicted in harper lee's to kill a mockingbird which is set during the depression and deals with racism in a small town america now american small town in films in american films so during the depression uh, era as we have been talking about small towns are safe havens and uh, films such as our town and mr deed goes to washington and also the best years of our life these films depicted that everything is all right with the world andy hardy series and this was this was a popular series of films starring Uh, a major child star of that period mickey rooney uh, it denied the presence of the depression which is very interesting that in these films depression was not even hinted at it uh, it was as if these things just don't matter and everything is all right with the world most of these uh, andy hardy series and also films such as national velvet and uh, lassi come home and also the great musicals of the time they were mgm productions these were the feel good films set in small towns which emphasized on old world family values traditional values and suggested that true happiness lies in community and conformity this is important to understand that to conform and to be one with the uh, rural life the small town life is the only way out because in times of crisis everyone comes together and help each other out so this was portrayed um, beautifully in a movie called it's a wonderful life it's a 1946 movie directed by frank capra and stars james stewart and donna reed it was set in a post war small utopian town named Bedford Falls it is about uh, the protagonist played by James Stewart his name is George Bailey he's a man he's a regular american guy who spends his life in helping people out 
when he is in financial trouble he decides to end his life on christmas eve the entire town prays for him and this is important to note that the community stands beside him these prayers reach god uh, who sends an angel to help george bailey bailey is shown uh, a dystopic vision of his community of his town had he not been born and thus uh, through divine intervention he is made to feel the true worth of his life he is made to realize that how good he has been um, for the people his life is after not after all not so worthless bailey is told that his town would have turned into a morally corrupt and mercenary place um so therefore there is a reason for him to go on it's a wonderful life is an idyllic idealized portrayal of a small town rather than a reality the representation is a collective fantasy of a, uh, of the audience of the film writers and the film goers um basically it reinforces the construct of victorian family values and prescribed gender roles men are for uh, men are breadwinners and women are homemakers the film depicts small town community at its best and it's an all time christmas movie an ultimate feel good film therefore the title by the 60s there was a major shift in attitudes uh, towards um, representation of american small town in films films started reflecting disillusionment with the small town the so called idyllic existence the protagonists were shown as misfits and at um, ill at ease with uh, their restrictive surroundings so you have to conform to much in your small town environment that was the idea so uh, one fi- uh, film of that time this was not a great success but still uh, it made a statement it was splendor in the grass alaya kazans and based on william ince play it's a 1961 film that talks about the repressions of life in a small town and this film was a uh, was considered major shift in attitude now um, here uh, yeah, i would like to show you the ending from it's a wonderful life in the 70s the, and we have been talking about the american new wave so the last picture show directed by peter bogdanovich starring jeff bridges and uh, sibyl shepherd is a 1971 film which was a major success and um it's interesting to note the title or sorry the tagline of the film anarone texas it's a small town in texas anarone 1951 nothing much has changed that means so the movie is like a period picture which is uh, set in the 50s it was made in 71 but depicts the small town life in 51 and the idea is nothing much has changed in life the setting is a, a small town called anarone a scene takes place outside town at the tank which is a pond that briefly breaks the monotony of the flat texan uh, prairies the protagonist sam has taken his friends fishing there even though there is nothing in the tank but only turtles and um, that's all right with sam he says he doesn't like fish doesn't like to clean them doesn't like to smell them he goes fishing for the scenery so sam is the soul of anarone in texas he owns the diner the pool hall and the royal theater and without those three places there is no place to go for young people in that town so the film focuses on the loneliness alienation of the people in a small town here is a scene from the last picture show so um i'll be talking about some uh, films that came in between but let me introduce you to one of my uh, all time favorite films representing 
small towns in America that is Lassie Hellstrom's What's Eating Gilbert Grape um, starring uh, Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio and Juliet Lewis. Again it has a, a very telling tagline, Arnie knows a secret, his big brother Gilbert is the greatest person on the planet. So, Gilbert is played by Johnny Depp and Arnie is Leonardo DiCaprio. Gilbert lives in a small town called Andorra which is in Iowa state. Uh, it is a town so flat and so featureless that uh, uh, there is no energy in the town at all, specifically where Gilbert Grape family is concerned. The Grapes that is the family name, they, have, they seem to uh, have been stuck in a rut in Andorra. Gilbert is around 21 years old, he wants to break free, wants to explore the world, but he cannot because he has a brother um, who is mentally retarded played uh, superbly by Leonardo DiCaprio and then he has his mother who is extremely ill. He hangs out with other guys his age drinking coffee making small talk and he has a friend Bobby who runs uh, an undertaking business. Um, his mother spends most of her time just sitting on the sofa. His um, best friend Bobby uh, is an undertaker and is an apprentice at his dad's funeral parlor and most of the conversation centers on what to do with this trade. His boss who runs the local grocery store is uh, under threat from the big new supermarkets on the edge of town which has live lobsters in a tank, something uh, the people at Andorra can't stop uh, raving about. So, there is a threat to his uh, livelihood also. The only person who gives him a sort of a break which is not very unhappy, but uh, there is a, a certain kind of a, a break from monotony is his uh, clandestine affair with a married woman Mrs. Car Mrs. Carver as played by Mary Steinberger, uh, who is a very lonely housewife. Now at home Gilbert oversees his two younger sisters, the household runs according to rituals and traditions. Gilbert is more or less equal to these challenges in spite of his young age, but uh, he is bored to death, he is absolutely, absolutely alienated from his surroundings. Now um, still the beauty of the film is that in spite of so much of troubles, the family is not depicted as dysfunctional or isolated. Gilbert may have his troubles, but still the community stands by him more or less. In Andorra, everybody knows everyone and Gilbert fits in, life is possible, the family at least is able to function. Now here is a beautiful scene from What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Oliver Stone's U-Turn starring Sean Penn, Jennifer Lopez, Joaquin Phoenix and Nick Nolte is another representation of a uh, small town and its uh, moral decay. Now see this idea was earlier represented in David Lynch's seminal Blue Velvet. This is the Blue Velvet in fact is one of the greatest films that talks about the hypocrisy of a small town and U-Turn is another film that takes the whole theme forward. The story in U-turn starts with Bobby Cooper uh, played by Sean Penn driving somewhere in the middle of the desert in Arizona on his way to pay the bookies that have already chopped two of his fingers off because he was too late to pay them. His car breaks down and the only option that he has is to leave the main road and go to a small dusty town called uh, the town's name is Superior. So, he meets all kinds of weird people including a blind Native American, a garage owner, a person called T and T who is always on the verge of explosion. Bobby wants to get out of uh, this town as quickly as possible, but he has no money because he has been robbed and the mechanic charges him an enormous price for the repairs. 
He has no choice but to stay in the town to try to live with these people and to stay out of the hands of the bookies until he has found some money. There are extremely in true Oliver Stone tradition, there are extremely innovative shots and the music is by Ennio Maricon, again which all these things add to the dark mood of the film. David Lynch's 1986 Blue Velvet um, starring Dennis Hopper and Isabella Rossellini is another film that I would uh, heavily recommend to you. Now, in Cold Blood, this is uh, based on uh, Truman Capote's novel. It is like, uh, you know, it comes in the tradition of new journalism, the blend of facts and fiction and it's a, uh, the movie was uh, directed by Richard Brooks in 1967. Some films were actually filmed on locations of original events in uh, Garden City and Holocomb, Kansas, including the uh, residence of the murdered family. Th this is about the clutters who were mercilessly and meaninglessly murdered by uh, two drifters. There was no reason actually for murdering. This, this was based on a uh, true story, on an actual case and Truman Capote decided to write a novella based on this. So, the film stars Robert Blake and Scott Wilson and John Forsyth. The story is set in a small town, Holocom in Kansas, which appealed to Capote as a very, as the very embodiment of traditional American ideas. Now, the dead family, the murdered family, the clutters, they cannot speak for themselves. So, Capote's information about them was supplied by neighbors, friends and other people who knew the family. Capote got most of his information about the preparation of the crime directly from uh, the murderers actually and thus he shapes readers opinion about the victims and also about the criminals. Cohen Brothers 1996 Fargo is uh, an extremely entertaining and important film again which depicts decadence and decay in a small town is set in the Scandinavian American upper midwest where the Coens actually grew up. The tagline of the film is a homespun murder story. The movie starred William H. Macy, Francis McDormand and Steve Buscemi. It begins with the information that it is based on a true story and ends with a disclaimer that all persons and events are fictitious. So, that is Cohen's play on cinematic language. The usage of the term true story is ironic and just should be seen as a stylistic device. Fargo is a dark comedy of events that is spiral out of control in the middle of a seemingly calm and placid landscape of the American Midwest. The movie is today remembered for its stark visuals and the local accent. See, small towns are always known or any space or locality is known for its accent, the way the people talk and it is captured wonderfully in Fargo. It also has arresting long shots of vehicles tra traversing the snow blanketed landscapes. Overall, there is a sense of quiet bleakness. It is true to the rhythms of a small town life. Also uh, uh, interesting to note in Fargo is the expressive use of whiteouts that sometimes make the characters appear to be moving through a dream. Roads appear, disappears. We have already referred to a history of violence by David Cronenberg and the tagline of the movie is everyone has something to hide. It is based on a graphic novel by John Wagner who also wrote Judge Dredd and uh, the movie is set in a small Indiana town where Tom Stahl as, as played by Viggo Mortensen runs one of uh, uh, the friendly little diners that acts as uh, the village crossroads and clearing house. He is a regular kind of uh, person married to a lawyer. Uh, and uh, father of two children. He speaks with a middle 
American accent. Now, these Indiana scenes are so persuasive that we wonder whether this is a David Cronenberg movie after all or not. So, the piece is very deceptive. Two tough guys enter the diner, they have guns, they threaten the customers and Tom Stahl now moves swiftly, takes out the two guys and ends up on the local front pages as a, a hero. The film is more about character and the deceptive illusionary nature of people and places. We are continuously being shown that small towns display disillusionment with life. These places can be hostile, for example, in Cold Blood and Fargo. Also, boys do, uh, don't cry and no country for old men. These pl places can also be extremely weird as in Blue Velvet or maybe centers of corruption such as uh, Erin Brockovich, which was a 2000 movie. We also see a very disturbing trend that is small towns always stress on conformity as was seen in Chocola, that is again a last year Hallstrom movie. A key feature of small town films is that it stresses too much of conformity and community life, everyone knows everyone. Culturally, you have houses, particular places of or, um, for entertainment, but very limited places. Okay, they could be a diner. In fact, there was a movie by uh, Barry Levinson called Diner, okay, which is again about a small town and alienation. Although it is a very fine movie, it is one of those feel good films. But then, of course, you have the, you can sense the uh, the kind of disillusionment that the four young protagonists in Diner are experiencing in their very constrained life. Again, a key feature of small town films is uh, the language and uh, the accents are region specific. They speak in dialects, local dialects. And then uh, uh, also the limited career opportunities and also limitations um, to forge relationships. So, this is also one of the elements of small town films. Now, in the Truman Show, which is which stands out because uh, of the way the film is conceived, you know, the conceptual quality of the film is so different from other small town films. So, Peter Weir film starring Jim Carrey and Ed Harris, and it's a commentary on our reality show obsessed society. So, it's again a take on nostalgia we feel about a small town, close knit community life. This town which is a creation of a small town life is called Sea Heaven Island Township and uh, the movie is all almost like scripted by its producers. So, there is a film within film going on. All the inhabitants of the screen of the small town are aware of that they are acting a, in fact in a movie um, or in a TV show except the protagonist that is Truman. He is so much controlled by the creators or creators of the show that he is not even allowed to move out of that town. So, his license plate reads Sea Heaven, a nice place to live and at the beginning we are told about his idyllic childhood existence, the innocence and self-sufficiency of small town and how there is a perfect harmony between family and society in a traditional small town. So, here is a scene from the Truman Show. Now, apart from small town uh, films, recently we have also been seeing life in suburbia okay, and uh, suburbia is no better than small towns, that is what these films seem to tell us about. They are the families and the society here are as dysfunctional as anywhere else. So, some of the major films are American Beauty, Edward Scissorhands, Disturbia, Revolutionary Road and also Watch Devil's Advocate, which is 
sort of an exception because the hero gets corrupted when he comes uh, in contact with the big city, the New York people and he finds his moral values again, rather refines his moral values when he returns to his village, to his small town, suburban life. Now, um, I would like to talk about Chocolat also, which is set in a small French village. Okay, it is again directed by Lassie Hallstrom and it stars Juliet Binoche, Lena Olnil, um, Carrie Ann Moss and Johnny Depp. This is a small town where life has been the same for let us say 100 years, nothing has changed and here arrives Vienna Rocher, a mysterious enigmatic character played by Juliet Binoche who opens a chocolate shop, a chocolatier. Now, Vienna's effect is extraordinary on the uh, sedate and placid atmosphere of the village. The elderly people they find themselves recalling young love, troubled couples uh, regain their spark and uh, sparring neighbors become happy friends. But Vienna's beautiful life, you know, she, she beautifully decorates her shop with uh, small um, lovely objects, sumptuous candles and it also arouses something else, a battle between conformity and rebellion. So, this sparks of moral indignation among certain section of people, especially in the self-righteous character as played by Alfred Molina that is Count de Renaud, who declares Vienne as public enemy number one. Here is a scene from Chocolat. So, I would like to end the discussion with uh, the Italian movie 1988 film Cinema Paradiso which was directed by Giuseppe Tornatori and it also won the Oscar for the best foreign picture, a film which is a celebration of the everlasting magic of the movies. The setting is again a small Italian town in Sicily, Genocoldo and in the final years before the arrival of television. It has two major characters, old man Alfredo who rules the projection booth, uh, the movie is at least the uh, first half of the film is set in a movie theatre called Cinema Paradiso and uh, a young boy Salvatore who makes the booth, the projection booth his home away from his family. See his father was, uh, um, father is away during the war and his mother takes care of the little brother. Most of the time she remains indifferent to him, okay, she has to struggle a lot to make the ends meet. In the, uh, in the person who is, uh, who is working in the projection room, uh, young Salvatore or Toto as, he's, as his nickname goes, he finds a surrogate father. So, the film is uh, like uh, an autobiographical note that the only theatre in his hometown was when he was growing up and uh, there was, it showed everything from Kurosawa and to the B great films of Hercules and Tarzan and in cinema parody, so he had, this was, that was the first place he had caught glimpses of Charlie Chaplin, John Wayne and countless Hollywood melodrama. So, the film is a reminder of the scenes in Truffaut's Days and Night where the young boy steals a poster of Citizen Kane. It is a homage to all the great films ever made. The message of the film see, uh, seems to be that the power of the screen can compensate for a deprived life. The town square in Cinema Paradiso uh, uh, plays a major role. It is a character by itself. It is a community where people come together, offer advice and again it is a kind of you know nostalgic view of a life that is never going to come back again. The film is essentially about the reminiscence of a boy growing up in a small town. Small towns have also found a major place in contemporary um, Hindi films also such as Welcome to Sajjanpur, Manorma Six Feet Under, 
Ishkia and Dabang. So, there is a lot of research that is waiting to happen on representation of small town in cinema. Um, stylistically, too, it offers a lot because there are open spaces, uh, you, uh, filmmakers can also use uh, the local dialect and the local way of life. So, a very interesting area of study, small town and its representation. So, thank you very much.